What is going on everybody? I am Hoops and Hip Hop. So in the most recent trailer for Pokemon Sword and Shield that was revealed earlier this week, one of the most interesting things that were introduced in that trailer were the two new rivals that we are going to be seeing in this game. And they go by the names of Bead and Marnie. In addition to Hop, these two will be rivals that we will battle throughout our journey, just like we normally would with any other rival. However, these two are not just any other rivals because they are easily some of the most fascinating rivals we have ever seen in the history of the franchise. Even though we don't know much about them at this point, it's very plain to see that these two have very clear objectives and goals, almost unlike anything we have ever seen from rivals in the past, which alone makes them very exciting. But their goals and what they could could potentially be trying to accomplish as the Gallo League champion could potentially make them even more interesting, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. We're going to be analyzing both characters, what they're trying to do, what they're trying to accomplish, and maybe even speculate a little bit as far as what these characters are truly trying to do. I've even done some research into these characters, and what I have found is very, very curious to say the least, so we will be going over that as well, and whether or not that will actually mean anything for the potential plot and storyline of these two characters. So without any further ado, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the curious case of Bede and Marnie. Starting things off with Bead, Bead looks to be a very antagonistic type of rival. He looks to be that cocky, arrogant, jerk rival type that we've actually wanted for a long time since the days of Blue and Silver in the first two generations of Pokemon. So that in and of itself looks to be very encouraging in terms of the gameplay perspective, but in terms of the overall story and character perspective for Bead, he actually wants to become the champion, but he obviously has more going on than just that, because just looking at his artwork, you can clearly tell that he has got something up his sleeve, and it's even stated on the Pokemon website that he also has other objectives in addition to trying to become champion. And those other objectives are very likely related to Chairman Rose, because not only is it stated on the website that Chairman Rose gave Bede his endorsement to be able to enter the gym challenge, but you can very clearly see in Bede's artwork that he has the logo of Chairman Rose's company on the back of his jacket. And he also wears a gold watch, which is an important part of his design given the way he looks at it in his battle animations, which looks the exact exact same as another gold watch that Chairman Rose himself is wearing in his official artwork. It already seemed like Chairman Rose was kind of a too-good-to-be-true kind of character, and many have suspected that he is going to be the main villain of these games, and given Bede's antagonistic nature and his clear association with Chairman Rose, this implies even more that Rose is going to be a villain in these games, but why exactly is he working with Bede? Well, my personal idea is that he could actually be Chairman Rose's hand-picked horse in the race, so to speak, meaning that Bede is actually working for him and Chairman Rose had Bede enter the gym challenge with the specific intention of preventing you as the player from becoming the champion for some reason, but also and probably more importantly, preventing Marnie from doing so as well, since she also has a very specific reason of some kind as to why she wants to be become the champion. This frankly does seem like a likely scenario, but why would Chairman Rose need someone to become the champion on his behalf? This becomes even more confusing when we consider the fact that Chairman Rose also has a similar relationship with Leon, who already is the champion of the Gala region, so if this were to be the case, it would be anyone's guess as to why he would want to possibly overthrow Leon as the champion that he essentially has already put in place given their close relationship. There could be a possible business motivation going on, as we know that Chairman Rose is the president of a large corporation, and we know that business and industry is a huge thing in this region, and it plays a big part in the gym challenge. And once again, Bede even has Rose's company's logo on his jacket. So maybe if Bede wins, possibly being a representative of Rose's company in the gym challenge, Rose's company has something to gain from it, and by extension, Rose himself has something to gain from it as well. 
even though we don't know a whole lot about what is going to go down in the story, from the little bits and pieces that we do have, it seems like there is going to be a lot of corruption and scandal going on within the gym challenge to say the least, which is a very exciting prospect in terms of the overall story of this game. But now it's time to get into the research side of Bede's character, and this is where it gets very, very curious and interesting. I decided to look up where Bede's name comes from, given the fact it is somewhat unique, and his name actually comes from the word beet, as in the vegetable, and in fact, his name in Japanese is literally just beet. However, in addition to this vegetable and plant inspiration, which it seems like many of the characters of the Pokemon franchise recently have had, it's also likely that his English name could come from Saint Bede, who was a monk who lived in the UK between the years of 672 and 735 AD. And I think we can say with a reasonable amount of certainty that Bede's English name was inspired by this Saint Bede person, given the fact that his name is unique, and given the fact that Saint Bede has a direct connection to the UK having lived there, and that's obviously where the Gala region in Sword and Shield is based on. With that being said though, who is this Saint Bede, you might be asking? Well, Saint Bede was actually extremely prominent in the Catholic Church during the time he was alive, as not only was he literally deemed a saint, but he was also named a Doctor of the Church by Pope Leo XIII in 1899, so it's very clear to see that this guy is a huge deal within the Catholic Church and its history as well. And this just makes it all the more interesting and puzzling as to why Bede is using this, in all likelihood, as a partial inspiration for his name. It could obviously just be to reference someone prominent within UK history, but why this person specifically? Religion is obviously a very touchy subject, especially within a game like Pokemon, so this reference, with as likely as it is in the first place, is fascinating to say the least, and it'll be interesting to see if anything actually comes from it once we learn more more about Bede's character. But now we are going to move on to the second rival that was introduced, and definitely the more fan favorite of the two, and that would be Marnie. Now Marnie is another rival of yours in these games, who is described on the website as having a competitive side, so it's very encouraging just from that aspect in terms of her being a rival, because obviously we always want a rival who is going to push us as the player. However, she is also in pursuit of becoming the champion, quote, in order to accomplish a certain goal, once again via the website. That wording alone is enough to show that there's something deeper going on with her character, and that is demonstrated even more by the fact that Team Yell's whole purpose is to act as her fanbase and bar any of her competitors from becoming champion instead of her. This is especially curious because it hasn't even been mentioned at this point that she's even a member of Team Yell at all, so what would Team Yell have to gain from Marnie becoming the champion, and what could her goal be that could potentially be so disruptive to Chairman Rose that he has potentially needed to put his own trainer into the challenge in Bede in order to stop her? However, as much as I would like to continue to speculate on ideas for Marnie's potential role in the story, that's pretty much as far as we can go at this time because we really don't know that much about her character at this point. However, we can potentially learn more about her from her name, just like we did with Bede, and once again, just like with Bede, this is where it gets very, very interesting. So when it comes to Marnie's name, Marnie's name across all languages is actually derived from the rosemary plant and the rosemarinous genus of which it is a part, further exemplifying the plant theme for the names of the human characters in Pokemon. And while just being another plant-based name that we have once again seen with virtually every Pokemon character recently, it also has some potential implications for what could ultimately occur with Marnie's character. Rosemary as a plant has long been associated with the mourning and remembrance of those who have died, and historically, it has also been placed within graves of the dead in order to show those who have passed on remembrance and respect. So with this very specific trait being tied to the Rosemary plant, could this have something to do with Marnie's ultimate goal? Could she have a loved one possibly who has passed on that she's trying to take care of some unfinished business for, or maybe she's even trying to bring back to life? 
At this point, it's obviously anyone's guess as to whether or not this is going to play a role for Marnie in the story at all, but at this point, it's also just as likely as anything else, and it could provide for a very interesting story for Marnie's character if this is indeed the case in one way or another. It gets really interesting though when we take a look at Marnie's Japanese name, which is Mary. Now, this is rather peculiar because not only is that an English name for the Japanese version of this character, but it doesn't even carry over to the English version of her name like you would expect in this situation. But just like Bede, Marnie, or rather Mary's name, also has a deep religious connection as well, as it is the name of none other than Jesus' mother within Christianity. Now, you might be saying that Mary is a very common name, so by no means does it mean that there's a connection to the Virgin Mary, but when we consider the fact that the Rosemary plant has actually been directly tied to Mary herself within a number of different stories and accounts pertaining to this very person, it starts to seem a bit more likely, especially when we consider the religious connotations of her fellow rival Bede's name, who she was introduced with at the same time. Now, am I saying that this means that Pokemon Sword and Shield are going to be all churchy? No, not at all. But at the same time, it's all very curious, and it's definitely worth keeping your eyes on as we begin to learn more about the story of this game and about these two characters specifically. And I definitely wouldn't forget about the death and remembrance side of Marnie's name either, because I could for sure see that come into play once we learn more about the story of these games. And there we have it, everybody. Now, with the limited information that we do have about these characters, it's honestly hard to form any kind of solid, concrete theory about what I really think is going to happen with these characters in Pokemon Sword and Shield. And as you can probably tell by now, there is much more going on to these two characters than meets the eye, and maybe even more than you could have possibly imagined if this potential religious side to these characters actually ends up playing out in some way in the final game. But at the end of the day though, there's nothing that we can legitimately say for sure though. It's all just speculation, so you guys are going to have to let me know all of your thoughts and ideas about this in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like because it really does help out as well. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe for more Pokemon content every week. If you'd like to hear more from me as well, you can check out my Pokemon podcast over on the UCAST Studios YouTube channel, and you can also follow me on Spotify and listen to some of my Pokemon remixes there, because that directly supports the channel and is very much appreciated. With all of that being said though, I will be back on Tuesday with another video, so be sure to hit that notification bell so you can be notified as soon as it goes live, and with that being said, I love you guys as always, and until the next one as always, I will smell you guys later.